Yo, 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 this is Mr. O. And today we're going to learn about real life application involving exponential function. Okay. Exponential function has so many uh, means to relate to real life, you know, like uh, finding the appreciation and depreciation of a car or a house, uh, and also with the bank, and also with uh, half life or the growth and decay, you know, of many things. So let's go ahead now here. We're going to apply to find the compound interest, okay? Uh, finding the balance for compound interest. Before anything else, let's find first the formula. The formula for compound interest is A is equal to P1 plus R over N, the NT. What is the meaning of this? P is your initial amount. A is the final amount, and there is the number of times compounded, means A, uh, there are times that uh, it will compound it uh, monthly in a year, that means 12 times. If it's uh, semi-annual, it will be twice a year. Quarterly, it will be obviously four times. If it's uh, weekly, it will be 52 in a year. Daily, we'll just keep it 365, okay? If it's only uh, annual, it's going to be one time only, once a year, right? Uh, the R means the rate in decimal form, okay? In decimal value, okay? Not in percent. And T is how many in a year? or this is talks about the year, okay? So here I have a problem. Um, a total of 9,000 is invested at an annual interest rate of 2.5% compounded annually, okay? That means if it's annually, the value of your N there is equal to one, okay? 9,000 there is the amount that invested initially, so that is our P. And 2.5% is our rate, so that should be point to hold on sorry my bad what you do there is you move the decimal point twice one two so point zero two five is my rate <clears throat> and uh, find the balance of the account in account after five years the five years there is your t so let me raise this one to have space here so again a is my final amount p is the initial r is my compounded uh, and T is your year, R is the rate. <clears throat> so A is what we're looking for. The initial amount is 9,000. One plus the rate here is 0 0.025 over one, or since it's over one, you don't have to write that down. And there is one, so you don't have to write down T is five, okay? So it's 9,000, one, zero one point zero two five to the fifth power and here i'm gonna need you to pull up your graphing calculator okay um so it will be nine thousand parenthesis one point zero two five raised to the fifth power the value of that uh investment will be now ten thousand one hundred eighty two point sixty seven dollars okay there you go so let's do this one here uh you invest six thousand at an annual rate of four percent find the balance after seven years when the interest is compiled quarterly monthly and continuously so here we're going to have three problem in one okay so invested 6,000, that's your P. The rate there is 4%, 0.04. The balance is after the year, so it will be T equals 7. When the interest compounded quarterly, the value of N there is 4. Monthly, the value of N there is 12. Continuously something new, which I will do it um, in a while, okay? So here, A equals P is 6,000. 1 plus 0 0.04 over what? 
the end for a letter A is quarterly, so this will be four. And then monthly, <clears throat> quarterly is four to the seven or 28 there, okay? So most of the time, I'm going to ask you to polish this one, simplify it as much as you can before giving me the answer. So 6,000, um, you got to divide 0 0.04 first by 4. That gives you 0 0.01, then add it by 1, and that will show the 1.01. It's nice to see this, 1.01, because this is the, uh, uh, the rate, how much you're going up, you know. Or going down and 4 times 7 is 28 okay so how many times it will incur so the answer for letter A now you can plug in uh, so 1.01 .01 raised to the 28 take note guys do not multiply 6,000 and the 1.01 .01 to 28 the last thing you're gonna do is to multiply by 6,000 raise it by, because exponent first before you multiply that's what your aunt Sally said right times 6,000 so the value for A is $7,927.75. This is for the monthly. While for the, uh, no, that's for the quarterly. I mean, my bad, that's for the quarterly. For the monthly, 6,001.04 again. The monthly is 12 to the 28th. So 0 0.04 divided by 12 is going to give you 0 0.0033 plus 1, 1.003. 1 On this case, don't stop writing the 3 there to make it a better and accurate answer. Raise to the 28 times 6,000. That will give you 6,000. Five hundred eighty-five point ninety-four dollars. This is for the monthly. For the continuously, the formula is different. It's called the A part. Same thing. P is the initial. E is the epsilon number, which is second ln. You will see E if you're using a text uh, TI eighty-four or eighty-three. R is still the rate. T is the time. Okay. So A, the initial one is 6,000. E, just write the E there. You don't have to do anything for now. Raise to the power 0 0.04 times T. What's T here? T is seven years, okay? The meaning of this one is continuously. Never stop compounding the interest. So 6,000 uh, E 0 0.04 times seven. Hold on. 0 0.04 times 7, that will be 0 0.28. So I need you to plug that in the calculator. So second LN will pop in the E raised to the power of 0 0.28 times 6,000. That will bring you 7,938.78 cents for continuously. Okay. All right, there you go. And that's how you apply the formula for an, uh, compound interest. Okay, for half life, half life. This will determine, um, you know, for a certain chemical, how much it will be the efficiency of this or population if it gets less every time by half, let's say. Um, kind of the same thing. A is the final amount, A, O, or P will be your initial amount. Half is your base of your exp of your exponential expression. T is the time. H is the half life. How much is it? Every time, uh, at a time, it becomes half. You know, for example, one pound becomes half pound. Okay. So here, there's a radioactive. Let Y represent the mass in grams of strontium. I don't know if you're not right. Whose half life is 29 years? So it means say this chemical thing uh, gets half whatever the mass of it after every 29 years the quantity strontium percent after t years is y equals 10 one half t over 29 okay uh, i don't know if that's clear to you but the same thing that y is your final amount then there is your initial 
mass or initial amount. One half is just a formula for half-life. And 29 years because it gets less by a half of the original one every 29 years. Okay. So what is the initial amount? The initial amount of this uh, strontium is 10 um, grams. Because whatever that AO or P is your initial amount. Okay. Uh, how much of the initial mass is present after 80 years? So you're going to plug in the 80 years back to the T there. So Y is equal to 10 half of 80 over 29. So you're going to punch it in your calculator. So half is 0.5 raised to the power of parentheses 80 divided by 29 close parentheses. The 18 over 29 has to be an exponent. And then I get I got here 0.1477 something times 10. That will leave us from the 10 grams after 80 years, it becomes a 1.48 grams after 80 years. Next, the approximate number of fruit flies. In a population after t hours is given q of t is equal to 20 e to the power of 0.3 t. Find the initial amount of fruit flies in the population. How large is the population after 72 hours? And when are the when are there 50 fruit flies enough for a pro, uh, was that proper fruit fly party? Okay. So we're given this equation. It's the same thing. This is the A. This is the AO. Uh, in this case here, the uh, half-life here is given the E.3T. So we'll just apply this formula here. Okay. So the initial amount here is the AO, which is 20 uh, flies, right? That's the initial. How large is the population after 72 hours? So you're going to plug in 72 hours right here to the here so we'll have uh, 20 e point raised to the power point three times 72 so second ln 72 times point three oh that's a big number times 20 you will see here now is a lot because it gains uh, every certain number of hours there. So here the Q of 72 becomes 4.8 times 10 to the 10th power. Means I mean of that one is around 4.8. You have to move this decimal point. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. That's a lot of zeros, guys. That's how much would it be? Like 48 trillion, I think. Thousands, million. What's the next one? Whatever is that one. It's 48 trillion, I think. But if you give me 4.8 times the 10th of 10th power, that should be good. Okay. And you didn't miss anything there. Hold on. Point three. Hold on, I want to double check. Twenty e to the seventy-two times point three. Yep, I'm right there. Okay, next. When are the there fifty fruit flies? So when to me say this will be fifty here. Yeah, you're gonna plug in fifty there. Fifty equals twenty e point three t. So here you're gonna divide by twenty. Divide by 20, that gives you 2.5, right? It's equal to E.3T. Now you have to learn the idea of uh, logarithmic function, wherein you have to multiply this by ln and ln here. This will give you ln 2.5 is equal to 0.3T, which you're going to divide by 0 0.3, 0 0.3 here. So ln second, no, you don't have to do second, ln of 2.5, enter. Divide by 0.3, the answer is in 3.05 hours. Okay. Alrighty. And that's all for me today. I hope you learned something. As always, kaboom.